Okay, right. This is where we've got to now on the home stretch. So all that's done. I've got to take that ragged edge off there, but I'll do that last if I don't get it in there. Oops. So all the threads came out. You can see that. Off in a minute. But the threads come out absolutely fine. So what we've got to do now is put that in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the lathe up with a collet in, set the top slide to this particular angle and then cut that and then hopefully when that tape is cut, so I'll just take that rag edge off the back of there and then we should be fine. I did pop mark it as well there look, so I know which way it goes back on. So set the lathe up. Right, so what I did, put a bit of bar in that forge oil, I machined that down to 20mm, so I knew it was running true to the lathe spindle. Slip that collar on, sorry, collet, and as you can see, we're, we're on the money. So the top slide is set, so I'll take this off now, and put the collet holder back on, and then we'll turn the taper. The only thing I say, what I'd, the only thing I would say with this, what I seem to seem to find is however much it's out here, let's say I rolled it down that uh, collet and I got to the end and I was five thou under. To get it back to zero, I go three times that. So I wouldn't move it two and a half thou, let's say, thinking half half of what it is that's out will bring it back. It doesn't seem to work. I'd move it 15 thou, so the needle went the opposite way and go back. And I couldn't believe it. it. It took me four attempts, I think. I adjusted it four times to get it smack on. I know when I did one of these before, I was titting around with it for a, oh God, it seemed like an age, but anyway, just thought I'd say that. Right, we'll get this, uh, get this off and get the collar chuck on. Right, we've got started. I've got the carriage locked and I've got the A-bomb gauge here. So when I want to move it out of the way to try collet in, I can bring the carriage back to exactly the same spot. Something I should have mentioned I didn't before. When you uh, set this cross slide to cut your taper and you're using your DTI gauge, you must remember to make sure that DTI gauge is absolutely smack on center otherwise you'll get a dodgy taper same as this the tool must be absolutely on the money center height that's what I use it's just something I cobbled together a long time ago take that screw or loosen the screw to move it up and down and I literally adjusted a tool until it was cut in bang on center height then sat that on top of the cross slide adjusted this till that was just kissing the top of the edge and I use that every time I relieve the bottom so it just sits a bit flatter but it's worked very well to be honest and it's ever so simple there's nothing to it uh, I'll get it in focus it mean this shot it'll be better so yeah so that's all it is I've seen lots of fancy different things with setting tall lights and all the rest that to me just seems you know what they say the simple things always seem to work the best Right, <coughs> we'll pull back out and then uh, we'll continue cutting the taper. We're not, if I can get that in, I'll show you. It's just starting to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go and find the depth gauge because I want to measure up and see how far that needs to be poking out the end. So, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, this is how I'm determining how far to bring this in. You must have a piece of steel inside your collet that is a good fit. That's a 10mm collet, 10mm silver steel. That's why I turned the 20mm uh, 
on the lathe when I put the collet on to set the top slide. So that is a nice tight fit on there. When I push that into, into there, what I'm doing, put, I don't know how else to do this, so I'm just doing it like this. Put my depth mic on there, and I'm getting, depending on where you put it, this doesn't sound very good, does it? It's averaging to about 540 there. So, when I get somewhere close, be 541. Four two. Five four one again. Five four two and a half. If I get somewhere to there, I'll be happy. Right, I just thought I'd show you how I was doing that to determine how far I wanted the collar. Right, off we go again. Just a boring bar I made a while ago. It's a broken carbide milling uh, cutter, I think. Just a shaft off it. Put off, just silver soldering ground up. I'm only running at 350 RPM. The feed, well, the feeds whatever you feel like. Man. Get somewhere close and then I put a bit more care into it.
well as well so far. I wonder why you always end up sitting in front of that. Hey, shop dog. Ben. Ben. That's all right. Hello. <laughs> you like that heater, don't you? Hey? You sit there all blooming day, wouldn't you? Yeah. Good lad. Should be it. Let's take it really steady and see if we can get a, a reasonable finish. Like I say, I'm expecting to polish it out a bit anyway. I'm just going to see what it looks like when I get this all the way in before I wind it back. Might be good enough just on the first cut. I'm about three foul, three or four foul, short on depth where I need to be. So this is just a little skim cut, so I'm hoping this is going to pull it in right where I want it. Shotgun's gone outside, a bit too hot. Very <laughs> pretty. He's got a perfect little tool grind, uh, grinder to go on your tool holder. And when I've done this, a tree. You'll have to make me one, Mike. <laughs> just a tad more. I'll take that out, that last little bit, and then uh, we'll give it a whirl, see how it goes, eh? Okay. Done. I took it out, I cleaned that back edge up, so there's no sharp bits anymore. finish is not bad. I don't know what it'll look like on camera. It does look a little bit liney but it's actually smooth to the touch. The thing is I think this bit of bar might be a bit bent. Now, I haven't drilled a hole in it or anything to put a bar in to hold it while you tighten the nut up because on this machine 
you just uh, put it in its low gear and that's more than enough uh, to hold this anyway. Not good. Well, too thin. Let me see if I can find a bit of different bar. I think that might be a bit bent. Less than a thousand. Just try something. Yeah, I think that's the bar. Oh, I'm pleased with that. Oops, the right one, you donut. So. Actually, all finished. Now I've got I've got some cold blue in the house. Just realised while I was looking for that, I'm thinking that uh, out here everything gets wet in this shed. Even though I think it's, it's minus degrees outside, I've got the door open and. My temperature goes, it goes up to 27 degrees, has gone off the chart because my oil heater is just, Jesus Christ, it, it could heat a building twice this size. Uh, but the nature of the beast is you leave anything out here at your peril because it gets piss wet through and goes rusty. There's a guy on YouTube uh, called Paul Salad, he's a woodworking guy, very good woodworking guy actually. And he, I was watching one of his videos, and he has a little tin, just like this. I mean, this is just a piece of cloth, obviously, about that wide. Big, long strip. Wrap it up in a boat, in a, like a toilet roll. Fill this tub half full of oil. Stick the cloth in, and it makes a brilliant, you know, with my other lathe, uh, other chucks and stuff, when I finish, I just put it in a low speed, spin it, touch it with this, and it puts a film of oil everywhere. You can go over your cross slides, top slide, anything you like. It handles the lot, and it does for what it is. It's brilliant. Great little idea. So, well, that's it. Job finished, apart from a bit of bluing. I've got. Uh, I need to make a short stubby one of these, ER32, to go on to a dividing head, which is, I think it's eight threads per inch, uh, be about inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter by eight, something like that, I can't remember off the top of my head. And then I made a little collet holder out of an ER25, I think it was, a 12 sided one. Now, bloody handy actually. So at some point I'm going to make another one, ER32 collet holder, 12 sided one. That'll be an uh, interesting little job. And what else have I got to do? 
Oh, I've got three gears left to finish making for this machine. But, uh, there's only so many hours in the day. So, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, catch you later. Cheers.